So earlier this year I went on a trip. The plan was to fly to Chicago and then to get on an Amtrak train all the way to California, passing through Iowa, Nebraska, Colorado, Utah, and Nevada on the way. This was originally supposed to be a birthday trip, but God put it on my heart to take advantage of this opportunity to pray for these states as I journeyed through them. So I brought a journal along with me and wrote down what God gave me for each state as I traveled through the country. After arriving in Chicago and checking in at the hotel, I got to see the room I would be in for the night and the beautiful views of the city from the room and from the outdoor balcony. So I've officially arrived in Chicago. Tomorrow I get on the California Zephyr and rides across the country all the way to San Francisco. This is a little bit different than the normal videos I make, but I'd like to make more videos like this actually going out somewhere rather than just staying in the same place. God has blessed this trip so far and I think it's gonna be a great trip and it will be an amazing ride across America and I hope you enjoy it. As the sun began to set and all the city lights turned out, I began to write down prayers for the city of Chicago. People tend to think about crime when they think of Chicago because that's all they ever hear in the news. But please speak life over the city because God is here and his desire for Chicago is not crime and struggles, but hope and glory. So I pray for the streets and the subways of the city, that they be occupied by angels and kingdom people and not demons and darkness. I pray that God's glory fall on the city like it fell on me tonight. Let the smog be replaced by your cloud of glory. Let the windy city be known as a place where God breathes. Let us repent for cursing this city and dismissing it as another Nineveh, when we should know that God saved Nineveh. Our words have power, so let us speak life over the city. I pray that a spirit of gratitude would spring up like a well in the schools and throughout the city so that generations would not look for another thing to complain about and another reason to be bitter. Lord, nullify this bitterness with your sweet spirit. I see two layers of the city, a heavy layer of darkness and a heavy layer of glory, oil and water. The water is there, but it sits beneath the oil because it's heavier, so it's harder to see and harder to reach. So I pray that the people that are tired of living on the surface where the oil is, tired of trying to drink the oil as if it will quench their thirst, will find water, the glory of God, right here in the city and find freedom. Lord, deliver them from mindsets that they think are helping them, but are actually just suffocating them. I pray that you cut off the pipeline of lies and wicked education, or that you give people the wisdom to know how to distinguish lies from truth. Let your truth and righteousness rule in this city. Let Chicago be safe for your children to play and for your Holy Spirit to dwell. Amen. The next day after I checked out, I started to make my way through the city to Union Station. I waited in the lobby for a few hours until they finally started boarding. The boarding process was extremely casual compared to flying. No checking in, no security, and very little communication. But eventually I made it to my seat and before I knew it, the train was moving. As time passed, I moved up to the observatory car while I waited for people to get off so I could get a better seat. Not too long into the ride, they announced that the train would be terminating in Salt Lake City because of a bad blizzard in California. They encouraged people to get off, but I didn't want to go all that way just for a 10 minute train ride. So I decided to stay on the train for the next 36 hours until we would eventually arrive in Utah's capital. One interesting thing about this train was that it was full of Amish people. Later the first evening, one of the Amish leaders approached me and started a conversation with me about Jesus. 
It was one of the most interesting conversations I've had, especially considering I knew almost nothing about Amish people. Turns out they weren't even Amish, they were actually German Baptist. But the man I talked to said they have very similar lifestyles as the Amish do. After a long chat, we exchanged addresses to mail letters to one another since they don't do texting, and then we all headed back to our seats for the night as we approached the border of Iowa. God, I pray that you would make Iowa a retreating place for people in this nation. People that are drowning in the world system and all its distractions would find your rest and your peace in this state. People that are surrounded by darkness where they are and have started to believe there's nothing more than what they are living in, there's nothing more to live for, I pray those people would find your peace in Iowa. They would find your hope, your light, and your life. I pray for the hearts of the people in this state that have become numb and lethargic and hopeless would find vision and purpose. Lord, do not exclude Iowa from your revival. Fill these people with your spirit so that they may know there is more. They do have a purpose and they are part of your kingdom and what you're doing. I pray that when people come here, they will be met with a people with a pure and humble spirit, not a proud people stubborn and stuck in their ways, but a sincere generation of believers with the fire and passion for Christ burning in their hearts. Let Iowa feed America. Iowa and its people are not forgotten. Iowa is not out of range. God sees you, Iowa, and he does have plans for you. You are not off the radar. You are not out of reach. America and the world needs you, Iowa. Feed us, Iowa. Feed America, not just with crops from the soil, but with the wheat of God. Amen. The next morning, I woke up to a stunning sunrise over the Golden Plains of Nebraska, which was a very pleasant view to wake up to considering I was tossed around in my coach seat all night. As the train continued on, I started to write down my prayers for Nebraska, which I honestly wasn't expecting to be so beautiful. I pray that the song of the Lord would come from Nebraska. I pray that worship leaders will be raised here and new songs will be written in these plains and from remote, unlikely people and places. Let worship arise in Nebraska for the nations to hear the sound. Let people pray without ceasing and worship you day and night. Let your presence be so thick and tangible that people won't want to leave or go about their business because they don't want to leave your presence. Take the unlikely generation of people and release a creative word, a creative sound from them that will usher in your presence, that changes the atmosphere and transforms people's lives. Lord, address the foreign spirits, the foreign gods of the land. Address them so that weeds would not be taking up space in Nebraska. Let the soil be pure and the ground be tilled so that your harvest can grow without hindrance. Let your harvest come forth in Nebraska, in the name of Jesus, amen. After hours of venturing through the Nebraska plains, we made it to Denver, Colorado. It was interesting to see people get on and off at every stop. There would be times when the train was packed and times when it was almost empty. So I'd have the observatory basically all to myself. Once we left Denver, the scenery started to change dramatically from flatlands to snowy mountainous terrain. So I pulled out my journal and wrote down my prayers for the state of Colorado and its people. Lord, I thank you for your stunning creation in Colorado. The work of your hands is beautiful and the way you carve out the land is awe-inspiring and majestic. I pray that Colorado would hear deep calling out to deep and that the prophets you've kept hidden in the mountains would come to the cities and towns and release the word you've entrusted with them. I pray that you would address injustice in the workforce. I pray that workers that are being mistreated by their employers would see the justice and vindication they are hoping and praying for. I pray that people in positions of power that are taking advantage of their position to silence and extort their workers would have a change of heart and see how much more fruit can be produced from a righteous government and righteous governance. 
Don't allow their heart to become indifferent and detached. Let your love heal hardened hearts and let Colorado be known for the love and righteousness of God. Let your love and healing fall on them with the snow and let your justice and truth come with the wind. Thank you, God, for Colorado, what you're doing here and what you're going to do. Amen. Since the train was going to terminate in Salt Lake, I knew the views in Colorado were going to be the best, so I made sure to get as many good shots as I could while we rode through the state. I sat in awe as the train went through tunnels, mountains, canyons, rivers, and eventually crossing the continental divide of North America. So let's take a minute and please enjoy the beautiful scenery. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the roaring thunder, thy power throughout the universe this way. Eventually I ended up falling back to sleep in the afternoon and by the time I woke up we were making our way into the red canyons of Utah. So before the sun completely set I wrote down my prayers for the final state of this trip. Thank you Lord for the spirit of friendship in Utah. I pray that this state would be a meeting place for unlikely unions and businesses working together to advance your kingdom. I pray that Utah would be a place for people from completely different backgrounds to come together despite their beliefs on little issues and regardless of their denomination because they all have one thing in common. They have a passion for Christ. Let Jesus Christ be the thing to bring unity to his church. Lord, don't allow your people to divide themselves due to insignificant differences. Gather your sheep in Utah and in Salt Lake City for massive creative projects to advance your kingdom and to spread your gospel to every nation. I pray that you would remove the scales from the eyes of your people in this state to see clearly what you are doing in the world. Continue to raise up the salt of the earth in Utah to preserve America and to go to many other countries to feed the poor and teach the young children about Jesus. Thank you, God, for what you're doing in this state and in the nation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Late that evening, after over 40 hours of riding, the train finally arrived in Salt Lake City. I booked a hotel for the night and then headed to the airport the next morning before flying back home to Florida. Very exhausted. Uh, overall, I think this was a great trip. Once again, I was sad I didn't get to make it to California, but I know I will make it out there at some point. I'm so blessed to be in a position that allows me to do stuff like this, so I can't thank God more for it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it blessed you. Make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, and make sure to be praying for America and for the rest of the world. Have a great day and have a blessed life.